That's why mistress needs to have a foot slave, a chauffeur, um, a personal slave to do like cooking and cleaning when mistress gets her own apartment and um, all kinds of stuff. So I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to look for a whole bunch of submissives when I get my own place and uh, have subs, you know, help out around. So this way mistress doesn't have to do anything. I'll just have to work and then they can just, you know, do all my chores and mistress doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> oh, see, I'm in my element. I'm pretty happy tonight, which is good. <laughs> oh, I do want to thank Spunk Lube for sponsoring the show. But I really, really, really want to say every every show I do a special thank you to the band Blitz Kid. They have been letting me use their song, She Dominates, for my radio show since 2018, okay? And every single new person that, like, follows me on Instagram goes, Wow, how did you get them to let them use, let you, them use your song? I said, well, I know somebody who's friendly with them, and they kind of hooked me up with them through email. We chatted, and uh, this was years ago, and they said, yeah, they give me permission to use She Dominates for my radio show. And it's kind of funny, when I was doing shows on YouTube at audios, they were trying to say it was copyright infringement. So basically, I had to, I have the email from the, of the band, and I sent it to them, and they leave me alone because I show proof that I have the right to use that, you know. So thank you, Blitz Kid. I think it's awesome. And for people who don't know who Blitz Kid is, they are a punk band, I believe from, I think, Virginia, I want to say. But I, I, I'm just going to double check to make sure. I actually like them very much. Uh, they're American, yeah, they're an American horror punk band from Bluefield, West Virginia. One of the leading exponents of the horror punk scene. Okay, uh, the band is led by Argyle Goolsby. Um, I think T.B. Monstros, I can't pronounce his last name. Um, but anyway, let me see. What's, I'm trying to go in here, but that's good. I mean, it's funny, my our, my friend is friends with them, so I was able to... So thank you very much. They were active from 1997 until 2012, and then they reformed in 2020. So basically, um, they weren't active when I was using their song. So now they're active again. Of course, you know, it, it, people that have listened to the podcast, the show... Tell me, they, they're like, who is that singing that song for your show? And I'm like, well, you like it? They're like, yeah, it's awesome. I said I was this band called Blitz Kid. It's a punk band. So I'm like, the song's called She Dominates. I'm like, you should get, you know, go on like Amazon or something or find some of their albums. So now I have uh, people who listen to the podcast who are now Blitz Kid fans, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So thank you, uh, Argyle Goolsby. For letting Mistress use the song, I, I I really have to thank you. It's it's good. It's very fitting, very fitting for me. The pain, the pleasure, the whole the whole TPE aspect of it. The the song is perfect. I love it, and uh, I want to thank Spunk Lube for being a sponsor. And I want to say my social media has been getting very active. I have two. Actually, I have three Instagram accounts. I have at the Real Mistress C sixty nine. At the Real Mistress Candy 69. And then at the Whip Appeal Show. So I have a Instagram for the Whip Appeal Show. Which is my show that I do on the network. I used to have an Instagram for the network. But it became too much to do. So I kind of have just one for one now. But you know I do have Twitter for BDSM Alive Radio Network. It's at BDSM Alive Radio on Twitter. Uh, I have at Mistress C69 on Twitter. And then I also have um, at Whip Appeal Show on Twitter. So I have three different Twitters. Uh, each one serves a purpose. Uh, all I, I try to stay active on all of my stuff. Mistress is on OnlyFans. I would really, really love if you wonderful, sweet, loving fans of mine would go and subscribe to my OnlyFans page. It is free to subscribe. Uh, it's, it's www.onlyfans.com forward slash mistress, M-I-S-T-R-E-S-S-C-A-N-D-Y 69. Okay. 
I post a lot of stuff on there. You know, look, if you subscribe for free, sometimes I want people to pay for things because, you know, Mistress is trying to make a little money on there. So I would hope, you know, I, and I do custom content also. So, you know, if you want to see something or you want like a private a fetish photo set, whether it's pictures of my feet or pictures of my leg or pictures of me wearing like thigh highs or nylons for you fellas that have like, you know, nylon and pantyhose fetish as well as panty fetish. Um, I'd be willing to do some of those, you know, of course, negotiable, whatever pricing, but you know, I, uh, cause I know they cost a lot of money and if you fellas really want them that badly, you'll, pay anything to worship Mistress Candy and objectify me from afar away. Because some of you, I think, I like to be objectified by submissive. I like to sit there looking all stout in my outfits and let you guys drool over me. That's kind of like, you know, objective. You guys are focusing on me like I'm an object, like I'm on a pedestal for your viewing only. You're not allowed to touch or do anything with me. That's basically what I'm doing with you guys. So it's kind of an interesting type of uh, fetish because, you know, objectification. I'm also an exhibitionist, which means I like to go out in public wearing fetish clothes. Um, you know, even though, you know, I've been doing this my whole life, I get a thrill about putting on sexy fetish clothes and going out in the regular public. I love to people to stare at me. So, and it's kind of funny, that's my fetish. Does it make me horny? No. To me, it gives me like a, like a high, like a body high. I'm not getting off from it sexually, but I'm, it's making my endorphins like set off and I'm feeling like, mm, I feel great. Like, wow, I can't believe I just fucking did that, you know, like dressed in fetish going into like a, a you know, a, a Catholicly like churchy type place wearing like BDSM gear, you know, like it's like one of those so it, it's kind of funny, you know, and, um, and then, you know, I've had, I, I've been in, in public places wearing like a bikini one time, you know, like when I was younger and back then, you know, I, I, it wasn't really, but I noticed like guys with you know, young kids, guys were staring at me and classmates. And I was like, wow, why are they staring? at me? They've never stared at me. And my friend goes, you've never worn a bikini outside of your backyard. She goes, now you're out like at the beach with us. And they finally get to see you with, like, no clothes on. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. You know, that would be, like, maybe my first type of exhibitionism to see how far I could get away with something. But yet it was the summertime. But for me, I never did that. I always wore one-piece bathing suits. And then one year I decided, wow, you know what, let me try to wear a different type of bathing suit. And then once I did that, it was, like, great. Like, I had no problems trying to like emerge out of my shell, so to speak. And then the more I did it, the more brazen and the more ballsy I became. So I kind of like maybe pushed my own limits on myself. And that's why now I'm so comfortable wearing anything out in public because I am who I am. I mean, I don't even have to wear makeup every day. And, you know, a couple of my girlfriends in town here, they're like, you know, you're really pretty. It's amazing. Like, they're like, not like me. I got to slap makeup on my face every day. They're like, you, you are like a natural beauty. And my one friend, you know, she, she's like 40, 41, right? And then when she found out how old I was, like last year or almost two years ago when I moved to this area, she couldn't believe that I was 45 then, right? Now I'm almost 47 and she says to me, she goes, dude, you look fucking better than I do. She goes, you make me look shameful for my age. <laughs> and I said to her, I said, well, I'm sorry you feel like that. She goes, no, listen, you know, she goes, it's going to be a kick. In, I have to give her a kick in the ass to get her to possibly like lose some weight or something, you know. But she's really cool. She loves the fact that I'm a dominatrix and she actually knows the mad harlot which is really funny. So, uh, the mad harlot, if you're listening, miss you, love you. We'll see you at Exotica in Edison. Uh, I hope you're having a great time in Miami. I saw Rita was on, uh, before Rita's there. Actually, Rita called me earlier today. I had a private conversation with her on the phone. She's awesome. I love her to death. 
I miss her terribly. Rita Daniels. You guys got to check her out. Go to RitaDaniels69.com. That's her website. Check her out. You'll love her to death. Um, but, you know, look. And then, you know, earlier I was talking to my mom about Exotica. And I told her how excited I was to go with my friends this year. And she goes, good. She goes, go with Mistress Black Velvet. Have a great time. She's like, you know, maybe my mom's like, maybe I can help you get a ride there if you can't get it or whatever. So, you know, my mom is totally for my happiness and wants me to be happy and trying to help me. And I'm I'm trying to, I guess, start a new life, meaning being now that I'm single and don't really have a boyfriend any longer or, or a co-host or a partner. So I'm I'm trying to start a new life and see where it takes me, you know? Um, but I am looking actively for work and when I can get myself some money and a job and this and that, then I will be venturing out of the, the Amityville horror house that I live in. And, um, and then I'll be on my, 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 my merry way to be happy. Cause I have to say the last past few days, I have been very unhappy and, um, I don't want to talk about it. It makes me upset. So, but you know, I mean, I'm I'm looking to have my best life. I'm going to be 47 on in uh, literally what is it? What's today? The 15th. Uh July 24th I turned 47. So, I'm really trying to uh I'm going to promise myself, give myself a birthday present that I'm not allowed to have anything that makes me any more upset when I'm 47. Mistress is not tolerating any fucking bullshit. If somebody wants to serve me and they come off as arrogant, um, topping from the bottom, telling mistress what the fuck to do, I'm sorry, but out you fucking go. I am not dealing with any subs like that. No fucking more. And you know what? I'm going to continue to provide my awesome listeners, you fans out there and supporters, that um, I'm going to promise you in the next couple of months, you're going to have some really great content on here. We're going to expand the network and, and get people to join and um, it's going to be good. And, and then you could always come and tune into the network for something new, raunchy, kinky, dirty, spiritual, whatever the fuck it is. You're going to find something very interesting on here. <laughs> oh, so for anyone who's listening and wants to know Mistress's personal fetishes, you can email me on any of my social media and put um, in the topic for the, uh, for the message, um, personal fetishes. And what I can do is I can make a list of my top, like 30 personal fetishes, and then I can talk about it and share it with you guys and girls on the internet. And if you guys are willing to call into the show or even send me some of your personal fetishes, I can talk about them also. And please keep the questions coming. Um, if you want to call in and ask a question, you could even call the the network phone number and leave Mistress a message. And you could even text that number, too. It's area code 516-406-3512. And you could absolutely uh, text Mistress questions to where I can, you know, read them aloud on next week's show and answer them for you. Um, or I can answer you on the spot if that's what you're looking for, but it's more fun for me to answer you on the show, I think, than anything else. So I think that would be like ideal. And then, um, you know, a bunch of other stuff. So like, I'm always trying to like get some cool things together, like to do on the shows. And, um, I really want people to start calling in more. Like I used to have a lot of callers call in. Every once in a while I get callers, but you know what? I think people are afraid to call in. They harass me to death, tell me they're going to call in, call in, call in. And then they get like cold feet and then they like, oh God, you know? So like, it's kind of funny when that happens a little bit, if you think about it, because it kind of makes you wonder like why people do that in the first place, you know? 
but actually an interesting enough story.